So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over an AQA topic test on the higher syllabus based around Pythagoras and Trigonometry. Now this will be the first of two so we'll include another one later which will probably include some more difficult questions. However this one does cover some basic Pythagoras and Trigonometry questions that can appear on both the calculator and the non-calculator paper. Now we'll, there will be a copy of the questions in the description below for you to download and have an attempt at before watching this video and going through the answers. So let's get started on this topic test on the higher syllabus on Pythagoras' theorem and trigonometry 1. Now the first set of questions are classed as calculator questions and section B is non-calculator where we're most likely having to use the exact values of trig or leave our answers in terms of uh, a third. So question 1 says what is the value of sine A for this particular triangle? So for this what I need to first of all is remember what sides do I use sine for? So we use sine for when we are using opposite over hypotenuse. So looking at this triangle, sine A is this angle here. So this is going to be the opposite. So I first of all need to work out what the hypotenuse is going to be. Now h squared is going to equal 2 squared plus 3 squared. So h squared equals 4 plus 9 which is 13. So h squared equals 13. So therefore h is going to equal the square root of 13 so I can label this side as 13. Now going back to the sine A formula what I now need to do is pick out the opposite which is 2 and the hypotenuse which is root 13 so sine A is going to equal 2 over root 13 which is our third option. Well question 2 it says the area of the triangle is 180 centimeters squared and it says work out the length of the perimeter of the, the triangle we need to work out what this is so first things first we need to work out what the height is so looking at this we know that the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2 now if the area of the triangle is 180 I know that the base is 40 so 40 times and let's just label this as h divided by 2 is going to equal 180 so therefore 360 is going to equal 40 h so h is going to equal 360 divided by 40, which gives me an answer of 9. So this answer here is 9. Then to work out what the, uh, the hypotenuse is going to be, so let's just call that x. So x squared equals, and it's going to be 9 squared plus 40 squared. So x squared equals 81 plus whatever 40 squared is, which is 1600. So x squared equals 1681. So therefore, x equals the square root of 1681. Uh, 1, so let's just label that as like so. And then all I then need to do is to work out the perimeter is add these three numbers together. So here, p equals 9 plus 40 plus root of 1681. And so if I then just work that out on my calculator, so 9 plus 40 plus root 1681, I get an answer of 90. And it's in centimetres. So moving on to question 3, it says that a ladder of length 5 metres leans against a wall that is 2.2 metres high. The midpoint of the ladder is in contact with the top of the wall. Safety guidance states that for a wall... 2.2 meters high, the base of the ladder should be between 0.8 and 0.9 meters from the wall. Is it safe? So let's have a look at working this out. So here we know that the ladder is 5.5 uh, 5 meters. So then this length here is going to be 2.5 meters. Now what I'm wanting to work out is basically what is this length here. So from this, all I've then got to do is label the triangle. So let's just do this. So that's C, and this is using Pythagoras. And let's label that B. So B squared equals C squared minus A squared. So B squared equals, and it's going to be 2.5 squared minus 2.2 squared. And so B squared equals, and let me just quickly type that into my calculator. And I get an answer of 141 over 100. So therefore, B equals the square root of that answer, which gives me an answer of 1.187. 
and so therefore is the ladder safe well if the ladder needs to be between those two numbers there 0 0.8 0 0.9 so the answer is going to be no it is not safe and if you just want to add a little bit more math notation you can just say as 1.2 is greater than 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 And something along those lines but I don't think that would be necessary I think just writing 1.18 in your working out and saying no would be enough so question four it says for this triangle which of the following is not true so let's have a look at what this is so here a squared so yeah let's say that's true sine c is equal to one um, so sine 90 is equal to one so that's true uh, sine a equals cos b uh, is a bit of a controversial one but in terms of this tan a um, I would say no that's going to be true in terms of what these two lengths here are going to be and because if you think about the reason for that is if I draw the sine graph and then draw the cos graph then that point there is going to be the same so in terms of what those two angles there are going to be and then finally for tan a well tan a equals a over b well in terms of that is if this is the angle of theta then this is going to be the opposite that's going to be the adjacent so it's going to be a over b so that one is wrong so this one is the one that is wrong the fourth option moving on to question five it says a b c c a c d are right angle triangles b c is equal to c d which equals x centimeters a b equals y centimeters work out expression for AD in terms of X and Y. So what we need to do is we need to work out what this length here actually is going to be. Now to do that what I need to do is first of all work out what this is here. So AC squared is going to be X squared plus Y squared. So therefore AC is going to equal the square root of X squared plus Y squared which is not X plus Y so we've got to leave it as that. So here I can write this length as this. Now look, taking this next triangle out, so looking at the next triangle, so AD squared is going to be equal to X squared plus the square root of X squared plus Y squared all squared. Now from this, what we can see is, that if I just take the AD squared equals X squared, now this square root here is going to cancel out with that squared so what I'm left with is x squared plus y squared so ad squared is going to be 2x squared plus y squared so therefore ad is going to equal the square root of 2x squared plus y squared and that there is my final answer so moving on to question 5b it says you are given that tan dac is equal to third show that the angle cab is approximately 19.5 so let's have a look at the angle DAC so going back to our diagram and let me just erase some of this just so we can see what each of them are I'm probably going to regret that so let me just quickly note down what each of these sides are and this length here square root of 2x squared plus y squared so we know that the side or the angle of DAC, so let's have a look at what that angle here is. So this angle here is equal to a third. So what we've got is if tan, let me just call that x. So if tan x equals a third and tan x is going to be x over x squared plus y squared uh, or the root of that. So what I've got is I've got this. Now, in terms of working that out, what I can then do is cross multiply. Um, so let me just go back to working that out. So let's just write that out. So what I've got is I've got a third equals x over square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, if I cross multiply, what I end up with is I'm going to end up with 3x equals square root of x squared plus y squared. Now if I then get rid of the square root, so what I end up is with 9x squared equals x squared plus y squared. 
I can then take the x squared over to the other side, so I end up with 8x squared equals y squared. Now from this, what I can then do is do a little bit of manipulation. So if I take, if I divide both sides by y squared, so I take this y squared, oh, don't know, I've got rubber there. So if I take this y squared over to the other side and I take the 8 over to this side, then what I'm going to end up with is I end up with x squared over y squared equals 1 over 8. Now, if I then square root both sides, then what I end up with is x over y equals 1 over root 8. Now, this is a little bit important because to work out the angle of CAB, which if I go back to my diagram, is this angle here. Now, if I then use tan to work out that angle, so if I just call that A, so tan A equals, and it's going to be opposite over adjacent, which is x over y. Well, I've just worked out what x over y actually is. So if I just go back here, that x over y equals 1 8. So tan a equals 1 over root 8. And if I type that into my calculator of inverse tan, so a equals the inverse tan of 1 over root 8. And if I do just that on my calculator, 1 divided by root 8 equals, wrong, I get 19.47122 blah blah blah, which is approximately 19.5, which is what they've asked me to prove. Now moving on to question section B, which is all non-calculator, and tells us specifically to put our calculator away. Um, it says which of the following is true and we need to circle our answer. So for these all it's a case of doing is knowing what your exact values of trig are and the correct answer you should have is that first one. For question 7 it says work out the height of h of this triangle give your answer in third form. So looking at this what we've got to do is obviously use trig. So let's label our sides up first. So if I call this theta, this is our h, and this is our o. Now it's always sometimes confusing when they use the letters h, because obviously you usually represent h with the hypotenuse, but if they've used h as the letter you need to find, then it's something that you just need to work around. So if you wanted to, you could call it x, um, if it doesn't prove confusing, but let's just have a look. So in terms of this first answer, let's have a look. So we're going to use sine, because that's the bits of information that uses o and h. I've got sine 60 equals O over H, which equals uh, X over 8. So then what I've then got is X equals 8 times sine 60. What is sine 60? Well, sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So what I've then got to do is X equals 8 times root 3 over 2, which equals 8 root 3 over 2. The 8 and the 2 cancel out, leaving me with 4, so the answer then is 4 root 3, and there is my final answer. Then moving on to question 8, it says A, B, C and A, C, D are two right angle triangles, show that C, D equals 2 centimetres. So first of all, it's always important that you do actually highlight what it is we're actually trying to need to find, so C, D is this. So I want to prove that that there is two centimeters. So in order to do that, what I need to do is find out what the other sides of the triangle are. So the first thing I'm going to do is find out what AC is. I'm going to find out what this length here is, because obviously to work out the side of the triangle using trig, I need to know what one of the sides are. And this AC is the only side that's connected to that top triangle. So to find out that, let me just call that X. So if I just draw that triangle out, Call that x, that's root 6, and this is 45. Now, if I label that triangle using trig, and what I end up with is h, and this is going to be a. So, what I've got is I've got cos 45 equals a over h, and cos 45 is going to be, in terms of exact values of trig, if I just remember carefully, is going to be 1 over root 2. So, it's 1 over root 2 equals and then it's going to be root 6 over x and if I do a bit of cross multiplying I get x equals root 12 so this length here is root 12 now once I've got that side I can then draw another triangle with the side that I'm trying to find 
so this is 30, this is the side that I'm going to find, which I'm going to call x, well let's call it y so we're not getting too confused, and this length I've just worked out as being root 12. So looking at this, this is going to be my opposite, that's going to be my adjacent, so what I've got is I've got tan 30 equals, and it's going to be y over root 12, so y equals root 12 times tan 30, and if you remember what tan 30 is, tan 30 is equal to 1 over root 3, so it's 12 times 1 over root 3, so what I've then end up with is y equals root 12 over root 3, which equals root 4, which is just 2. And there is my final answer. And there before we've proved that CD equals 2 centimetres. And if I'm not mistaken, that concludes the end of this first topic test on Pythagoras and Trig.